get into today's stories. All right, guys, we're going to start with the Tiger Woods documentary. So HBO Max has released the first of a two-part documentary series chronicling Tiger Woods' life with an obvious focus on his scandals and struggles being a key part of the series. Trey, we are both huge golf fans and fans of Tiger. What are your thoughts on the documentary and Tiger's struggles? So I thought it was, I watched the first episode, first part, uh, which is about an hour and a half. And the second part is airing uh, a week after the first part came out. So Sunday, um, it's an hour and a half as well. Um, I thought it was good. Um, you know, I, I do think you kind of have to be a Tiger fan to really enjoy it. Uh, Vanessa watched it and obviously she knows who Tiger Woods is. Um, but, but, you know, seeing how Earl is with him, and I think that's a big takeaway that everybody has, you know, how his dad was. And you always heard that, you know, you know, Earl would make him, uh, you know, hit golf balls until it was dark and he couldn't swing anymore, you know, and that's what made him great. Um, and I think you see that, you know, from, from, I say from time to time, but maybe more often than that, uh, with parents and their kids and, and athletics and they get, you know, a lot of pressure to play it. And, um, I think rarely does somebody actually follow through and, 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 uh, you know, whatever cash the check that their parents were trying to write. Um, so I think that's a lot of pressure on kids. I know I was lucky to, um, play sports when I was younger, and never had a lot of pressure. It was always, hey, as long as you enjoy playing, you should keep on playing. So that's, you know, certainly my approach from a parent standpoint. But um, Earl's approach was, hey, you are, you're going to change the world. Like you, you're going to be as big as or bigger than Gandhi or Jesus Christ. And that's, that's a tremendous amount. I can't even imagine on, on a kid. That's a tremendous amount of pressure and you even saw in the, in the episode where, you know, he kind of started to sway away a little bit and was trying to become, you know, uh, trying to date, uh, you know, get a little bit more invested in, in his girlfriend uh, when he was at Stanford and things like that. And his parents just completely put a stop to it because what they wanted him to do was golf and only golf. And I do think that for the people that are the best at what they do, professional athletes or whatever it is, you have to have the talent and the ability and you have to live it and breathe it every single day. So now as we, as we saw on that, and I think as we've seen, it comes at an expense, right? The balance isn't there. Um, for him, he didn't really have a chance to live a, a normal, what we would call a normal life of a kid. Everything was about golf. Um, and when he was younger, you could see that that was okay because he didn't know any better. But as he got a little bit older, um, he started to kind of want to, you know, want to, want to explore other things in his life. And I'm talking about, you know, when he was a teenager, like, you know, you're still a kid, and, uh, you know, you, you kind of got to see how the, you know, I don't know if tragedy is too strong of a word, but I think you see the things that transpired later on in his life and you can directly go back to this is a result of how he was raised and how strict uh, his parents were as far as his only his only goal in life was to play golf. So um, it certainly made me feel for him, um, certainly made me feel for him. Um and, uh, and I think there's some lessons to be learned from, uh, how Earl and his parents handled that. But you could say, if you could go back and do it again and your kid could become Tiger Woods, what would you do? Right. It's easy for me to say, but, uh, I, I thought it was good. Um, and I'm interested to see the way they ended it was, um, his, the, the main mistress, I guess, um, from, from the cheating scandal. Rachel, you could tell. Yeah. Yes. She comes in and she sits down like in the interview room and she just says, okay, uh, what do you guys want me, what do you guys want me to talk about again? And then it cuts, you know, fades to black. And then, uh, it says, you know, to be continued or whatever it's inferred that it's to be continued. So, um, that was kind of my take on it. So I haven't seen the documentary I'm going to obviously, but I've read, um, a lot. I've read a couple of books, um, on him, including Hank Haney's book, um, which I think has a lot of material that'll probably be covered in the second part of the documentary. Mm -hmm. Um, I've also read a um, bunch of articles and watch some other kind of mini documentaries as well on Tiger on a lot of the stuff you were talking about with how Earl Woods worked with them. I think you bring up a good point, which is that there's a level of sacrifice. I think that it, it reminds me of Kobe Bryant. If you ever heard of Kobe Bryant's upbringing is very similar, no. right? It mm -hmm. was so Kobe Bryant is just like maniacal focus on basketball. Um, you know, he went overseas and played overseas for a little while, but if you listen to him when he was younger and you listen to him, 
you know, um, because he was interviewed a lot when he was younger and even when he was older and reflected back, I mean, he was pretty socially awkward. Um, people that knew him and worked with him, um, you know, when he was younger as well. And I, you know, I think there's, there's, there's a, there's a balance there that they're missing, right? There's a, there's a level of development that's not happening in other areas because they're so focused and hyper-focused on just improving and becoming the best that they can be at their particular sport. Um, and so, you know, and, and I think that weighs on them and over time leads to potential lapses of judgment or other types of mistakes that as they're trying to enter the real world and be real humans. And I think the other thing that Tygo struggled with too, and he still received criticism to this day for it, um, and talk about it in the second part of the documentary, but you mentioned how Earl really wanted him to sort of be that world changing influence. Um, so you, you can't be a world changing influence if you sit on the sidelines on social issues. You look at someone like a LeBron James, right? LeBron's front and center when it comes to social unrest, point, Black, yeah. Lives, Black Lives Matters movement. You look at a Michael Jordan and Michael Jordan never really got that involved. Right. He is a little bit, he, he's gotten a little bit more kind of um, as he's gotten older, um, but certainly, you know, he's not nearly out in front as someone like a LeBron is. Tiger has always shied away from trying to be sort of a beacon for the black community, um, trying to, you know, be that person that's going to break the color barrier in a way that could be meaningful, um, you know, across you know, all kinds of different causes. He's never seen, him, seen himself like that. It reminds me too, if you've ever um, seen some of the stuff on OJ Simpson, it was really the same with OJ Simpson. Um, you know, he wanted nothing to do with being part of any real, you know, social justice or driving any of those type of issues. He just wanted to be, you know, great, great football player, even though he got a lot of um, pressure to do some of those things. So, um, interesting. I, I think that's really interesting. I think, I think Tiger's story is pretty fascinating. Um, I mean, obviously he's flawed, but we're all flawed, right? Um, you know, and if, if any of us were put under the microscope the way Tiger was, I don't know that anybody could have really held up, you know, that well. Um, I am curious too in the, the second part of the documentary where they go into some of his just crazy training regime, the Navy SEAL story. There's yep. so many aspects of the story that are that are fascinating, but. Um, but I'll tell you what, I, I'm still a Tiger fan. Um, I think people love a redemption story. And so see, seeing him come back and win the Masters, I think was satisfying for a lot of people. Um, and I still consider him to be probably the greatest golfer of all time, even if he's not gonna hit, you know, get um, Jack's record. Yeah. I, think, I think he can still win a couple more majors and I'm, I'm just excited to kind of see where he goes. And I am looking forward to watching the documentary. So Tony, I know you're not um, a huge golf fan or necessarily a Tiger fan, but just sort of as a, you know, just somebody that kind of sees the whole Tiger, you know, phenomenon from the sidelines, you're not really up, up close and personal, kind of what's your just general take of, of Tiger, um, you know, maybe just some of the, the scandals that maybe you've heard about or seen about, or you know, just anything else, any other noise that you're seeing? Yeah, I mean, I'm interested in watching the, uh, the documentary, if you will, I've always enjoyed uh, I know this isn't an ESPN production, I don't think, but I've always enjoyed E360s and mm -hmm. things like that, behind the lines or whatever you got going on. Because it's always different to look at it um, on a documentary aspect rather than having that person up there telling their story because you only kind of hear one thing. Um, I, I mean, I, I admire anyone that's, you know, great at their craft and, you know, not following golf as often, but hearing, you know, the headlines and the stories. Uh, he's an amazing athlete, and, and I think that's – really cool and you know however much effort he put into it, it's intriguing so i'm excited about it but um i mean other than that i, I don't really have a, a big you know he's human and and that's you know, i always look at whenever an athlete if you will falls from grace for a day or two or a week or a month or a year or longer i mean they we make mistakes man i mean just just like you said no matter what there's always going to be mistakes um these people get everything handed to them that they want and sometimes it's hard to, to not sit from the well all the time or even get yeah. a little full of yourself. You know, I'm, I'm interested in hearing about the, the Navy SEAL part of it. I, 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 was it his caddy that wrote a book or one of his ex uh, his, 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 or... his swing coach. So Hank Haney was a swing coach for, for a couple of years for him. And so he wrote a basically a tell-all book. Um, you know, it was kind of, honestly, it was kind of shitty of, of him to do that, right? He was, right, Tiger, right. Tiger, Tiger, Tiger let him inside and then he, he took advantage of that and used that information. Um, but it, it was still a fascinating read. But yeah, Tiger was obsessed with the Navy SEALs. Um, he actually wanted to be a Navy SEAL. He trained like a Navy SEAL. 
Um, it, so allegedly at one point he considered quitting golf uh, to become a Navy SEAL. Um, so you, you don't know how, how valid it is. And I did read an article that Tiger obviously did not approve the documentary, which means that, you know, some of the things that are discussed could be potentially just speculative versus confirmed. Right, but, right. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to the Navy SEAL piece that, that's pretty, pretty fascinating. Yeah, there's no yeah, way that anybody on his good. side approved that documentary. It's not, it doesn't paint Is it anybody not like a on his tiger. No, thing kind of? I, okay. no, I mean, yeah, I mean, the, the, the things that they, that they show and they say about his, his, his dad, and then even with Tiger and how he's portrayed, yeah, I, I can, there's no way that they were on board with that, which, which sure. kind of makes it more interesting. Like you were saying, Tony, it's, it's interesting to see the things that are not, um, you know, from their point of view, because they're going to, you know, yeah. say the well, last and then when dance, they get, right? That was all Jordan or whatever. When they, yeah. Right. Yeah. Jordan, well, and Scotty apparently actually complained about his portrayal in the last dance. And, and, and it was great, but there wasn't, it yeah. didn't dive into anything that we didn't already really know. Right. From a Jordan standpoint. Right. Right. But, on, but on this second part of the tiger doctor, I and mean, when they get into the Rachel, you could tell story and they start to talk through his mistresses and stuff. So when you talk about his, you know, not painting him a flattering light tray, it will likely not paint his inner circle in a flattering light either. Because I think that a lot of, a lot of people viewed his his agents, a couple of his really close friends as enablers to the behavior. But I think it's it's tough, right? When you get into that lifestyle, if you're just a, just a, a kind of a not a nobody, but you're a friend of a superstar, and you're getting all the perks that go with it, you know, you're you're not going to be the one to the bust them, right? Um, yep. So it, I think it'll be really interesting to sort of see some of that come to life on screen based on, you know, kind of what I've been reading. It'll also be interesting to even, even though I don't know that I, how much I take Rachel, you could tell seriously, it'll be interesting just to hear, you know, just what her side of the story is and, you know, how she sort of articulates some of the, some of the components of the story, but, um, For sure. but I'll definitely go check, I'll definitely go check it out. And maybe once we've watched both parts of it, we can come back and kind of do a full review just around that. Yeah, it's an it interesting like watch, idea. if nothing, if nothing else. Regardless, yeah. everybody knows who Tiger Woods is, so it's an interesting, exactly. interesting watch. Exactly. All right, moving on to the next. Let's talk about Deadpool 3. Kevin's